go live go live everybody we live up in here thank you for coming oh my goodness hello maria graham thank you for coming and welcome 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 unbiased thank you for the super chat for your nanny i appreciate you i appreciate you i appreciate each and every one of you so of course i waited till the, the little thingy came on and it said go live and i'm like oh my goodness i didn't bring any water i'm gonna be <clears throat> so i jumped up and to go get some water and i missed it unbiased says just know i'm sending you hugs and love ego amote ego amote you guys you guys are the best the very best mike's chaotic gardening thank you for coming phone all upside down i won't be able to read it you're doing what Oof. oh maria 75 degrees big go rooster Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I know that I know what time of the day it is where you are, Big Rooster. I want to show you something because I always sketch out. I sketch out little things before I make them. And I've you see me doing different things with jeans. The, the jeans that you sent me, Big Rooster, I am making a special bag that I want for me. I don't own a hobo bag. I don't own any of those big bags to carry my stuff in. And I kind of made a little sketch of a, bag, of a cross shoulder sling bag that will be lined that I plan on making out of your jeans i finally have a piece of fabric big enough sifting some soil and more thank you for coming mona thank you thank you thank you mona and i go back a couple of years when i first got on youtube i don't think either one of us had a channel then and we were in a gardening group we were in a gardening group and who else was in, in the group that's still on youtube Rochelle Brampton, Brampton Gardner was in the group, um, Homestead in the hood in the Bronx. And we've maintained contact. Why? Because good friends become family and family is everything. I really, really believe that. And you notice I say good friends. Everybody can't be your friend. You know, your friend is somebody okay for those of you who have not keeping up with the news i've been so busy i don't keep up deborah garrett thank you for coming in welcome hola sobrina bougie prepper my health is ruined today i think i fell off in the bushes last night i had so much fun on wind w-i-n-e down wednesday a purple patch queen unbiased Thank you, Elder Maria Graham. You guys, I was listening, but my eyes were tired, so I didn't want to put my glasses on. I was up till I'd know 10 o'clock, till 10 o'clock. Then I was going to call somebody else that was in the chat. I didn't want to disturb her. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how time does fly. So Big Rooster, when I do pull out, the pants that are big enough to make this sling bag. And I'm going to, I'm getting some special bag tags from somebody who is in the chat right now. I won't say, except for Sun Biased LLC, I'm getting some special bag tags instead of these little tiny things that I put in my bag. I finished, I finished a bag. I have a little reveal to do today. I'll wait until more people come in can you guys hear me loud and clear put a one in if you can hear me please because i was supposed to do something and add it but i don't know if she's going to come in i was afraid to touch this computer bougie says loud and clear you guys were hilarious last night 
Thank you for hitting the like button, you guys. I, I, I come in myself, and then when I pull it up on my phone, I'll say, oh, I didn't hit the like button my own self. Because those of you who don't, who don't have a channel, you have to go in after you do a live. And you have to edit it. You have to add your thumbnail. You have to add whether you want to be monetized. You have to add, um, not trigger words. You have to add tag words. So there's a bunch of stuff to do. A bunch of stuff to do. Well, you guys, it's still March. It is still, whoa. Not going to fall, not going to fall, <laughs> not going to fall. It is still National Crochet Month, Fiber Arts Month. So I have started physical slash occupational therapy for my knee replacement. You grow row. Hey, how are you? What did I see you doing today? I sit up there watching you guys on the TV don't put my glasses on and they can't remember everybody that I need to get. Oh, yes, I did. You were showing the things that you were making from your visit from your girl's trip. And I, too, keep a little something since I'm going to therapy and having to wait and blah, blah, blah and get transportation over there. So this is. Something I always have. I always have something to knit or crochet. So this is a little dishcloth. She's not in here right now, but I see. I um, I bring it every day. <laughs> she was in the car, live, and crocheting, and waiting for her husband on something. And that's how you get your fifteen minutes a day in. Ah, I bring it every day. I was just talking about you in the car, waiting for your husband, crocheting. And this is how you get a few minutes in. And at the end, you have something, something to show, no matter how small it is. One of my, the 15 minute challenge a day, and it could be anything. Sometimes I say, well, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to sew until the bobbin runs out of thread. Or I'm going to pin so many pieces. Just make something that's comfortable for you. And you will always have something that money cannot buy. Malaya, hi. Thank you for coming and welcome. Casings55, thank you for coming and welcome. For those of you who are here for a replay, I appreciate you. I appreciate the people in the bushes. I always say... I know what time it is. It's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. All the way to Pacific Coast time, it's 1 o'clock. And I have people who come in from around the world. Grown folks are supposed to be working during the day. So I get it. And then when the, when the live is over, I get so many, so many comments. So many people have seen it. And I appreciate it. One of the things I've done... I cut out. I take 15 minutes. I'll take pieces of fabric. This is one of the neck bone pillows. It's an ergonomic pillow for your neck that you can't buy. You cannot buy these anywhere. I buy the ones like at the airport or whatever. They go around your neck, the travel ones. They're not the same. They are not as good as this. You hold them by your hand. A baby can hold it. And some people make them different sizes. I don't. Most three-year-olds are strong, are strong, strong, strong. We have a three-year-old, and I know he's strong. He walks around with a bed pillow. So they can carry them like this, and they get big so fast. My 16-year-old has, and this is going to be a gift or something. Somebody's going to want it. Somebody just slammed the door so hard. So ignorant. I had to say that. But anyway, who goes in and slams the door that hard? And T-Way, 
Hershey's back there. He didn't hear it. So he barks. He barks when he hears noises. So Big Rooster, going back to you, big fella. I can't wait. I plan things in advance. When I have 15 minutes a day, sometimes I don't do anything. I think about the things I want to do. I think and plan about what I have, what I need to do. One of the things I wanted to show you, and I've been meaning to show you, some of you have seen it, and this is a little craft thing that I received when I was in the hospital six weeks ago. There was a candy striper that came around, and what this, I was holding it up. I didn't want to hold her by her neck because she's an angel, and it's just one of those big butterfly clips with a bead on the top and a ribbon. I think this is so cute. She left it on my bedside and I wasn't there. And a big, 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 big bead. Or you can tie a marble around it. It's just something that's really cute. Those of you who have kids, grandkids, you can make this for you can make this for Christmas trees, a Christmas ornament. I just think that it's really, 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 really cute. So I want to say, I wanted to wait till more of you got in because maybe you weren't here in the beginning. Unbiased LLC sent a super chat for love and to let her ninny knows that she loves me. I know that all of you love me. You could be doing anything on a Thursday afternoon, but you're here. Gee, mama grows hard in the garden. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. How is that new rabbit doing? How is the new rabbit? I see you planting everything. You guys are so far ahead of me. I feel kind of bad, but then I don't feel bad because I have been taking care of my health and doing all of my therapy. Bouge, I just want to tell you, from my waist down to my toes, all of these squats that I'm doing, all these sets of squats. I'm not doing the fancy squats like you. Deborah Garrett, hello. I don't know if I said hello. Hello to anyone I have not said hello to. I have been so busy, so busy doing interesting little things. For those of you who were here on Saturday and I opened that tote with old embroidery, with old crochet. I just want you to see that I I hand wash this little handkerchief. This is a handkerchief that was hand embroidered. I want to show it to you. Hand embroidered on linen and then crocheted around the edges. My grandmother used to always do this. My mom did too. And I used to always keep a little, they didn't have as many tissues in the boxes like they do now. I used to keep one of these hanging out of my jeans pocket, my back pocket. So I thought I'd wash this and keep it in my purse just in case one day I don't have a tissue or something. Of course, you have to wash it as soon as you use it. But that's so well. You said he's doing well, Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Wabbit. I had my sister Joanne Stevens and I, and my brothers and sisters had a jackrabbit. When we were growing up, that rabbit weighed 30 pounds, 30 pounds. We lived in an apartment at the time and daddy said he had to let him, we had to let him go in the woods. But after I found out that people actually ate rabbits, I didn't know that when I was little, I was wondering, I don't eat any unidentifiable meat. Sissy, Joanne Stevens. I was just talking about, what was our rabbit's name? Oh, my goodness. My mother, after the live on Saturday, everybody said mommy would not go to bed. She was trying to remember names of grandmothers and other people that I was talking about. She was watching on TV in the chat. So, you know, this helps to stimulate your memory of everybody and of your life and your family. And, you know, one of the arts, for those of you who are new or watching, my Renaissance grandma, I just finished watching you. 
the J Quad stands for Garden Quilt and Art Show, and it we talk about gardening. There are six living generations of family. I am the assistant matriarch. I'm the second oldest in this family string. And it's becoming my job to try to remember and write down all of the things that happened because I'm finding out Chipper. That was our rabbit's name. His name was Chipper. I have had other rabbits in other places and I had my rabbit trained to go to the bathroom in a cat litter box. My Renaissance grandma, I just saw you making banana blossoms because you're vegan, you don't eat fish or chicken. And I find that was most as it's interesting for those of you who have never eaten eaten banana blossoms. Malaa said she started embroidery recently. She's really liking it so far. There is another type of embroidery called cruel. It's made with bigger needles and cruel wool. Auntie Joanne used to like that. Our treasured home. Thank you for coming, Nancy. And welcome, welcome, welcome. I call this a tutorial, but it's really going to be more like a create and chat. I have some things written down that I wanted to show you guys. And I want to remember all of the things that I wanted to talk to you about. Who else is doing something with their hands at least a few minutes a day? 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Those of you who work, 15 minutes is a break at work. You can run to the ladies' room, men's room, wash your hands, and then you have time to do something. I want to show you something I got in the mail. I have not been to my post office box, but this is, it says 50, 50 bobbins because the... Um, the sewing machine that I'm using, the heavy duty singer, has a class, what they call a class 15 bobbin. Lorraine T, Ermana, thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome each and every one of you. But I'm not being, trying to be like, what do they call it? Sadiddy, whatever, whatever. But I want to show you something different about buying the bobbins for the particular machine that you have. When you get older, you have limited vision. I don't know if you can see at the top, like at 12 o'clock on this bobbin, when you, start, when you start winding a bobbin, there's a little hole in the inside. It's usually round and it's hard to get the thread through there. I want you guys to see this one has a square hole and oh my goodness, it was like two times the size of the round hole. So I just bit the bullet and bought 50 of these because yes, they cost a little bit more money than the regular bobbins, but the time that you save, time is money. Money is time. So I bought these. And Baya says hello to the chat. She's doing hair. Okay. So I'm going to do a reveal. It is 419. And dun, 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 dun. I finished. I finished this tote bag. It's actually for Mrs. ARD. I didn't mail it out today. This started out as a orphan block. I did some hand embroidery. Those are, were supposed to be French knots. They were messed up. At one point, I was legally legally blind. <laughs> I couldn't see the dot, couldn't feel it. But, oh, her was working. Her was working. And, oh, hello, Mother. If I didn't say hello, Mommy, and you're in the bushes, thank you. So I made this bag, and then I trimmed it in with a little piece of, of leather, a little green button to match the green right here. I, I put, this is called webbing, this little thing. 
I normally make I make my my straps for my bag. My granddaughter didn't get hers yet, but she's going to get it Sunday. I'm going to the family home for Easter, but this bag is a little bit is a little bit heavier. So Sharita will be getting her bag then. And I want to show you the inside of this bag because I make each and every bag as if I were going to keep it for myself. So you see that pretty batik, the pretty batik fabric that's inside for the pocket. There's a pocket inside that will be for a cell phone. I don't like my cell phone on the outside pocket. I used to go to different reunions and whatnot, and every pickpocket in the world is there. So I wanted you to see the bottom. And I bit the bullet and I made the bottom out of a both sides because nobody's going to see the bottom. I could have put unbleached muslin or something else. And Bougie Prepper says, don't worry, Bougie, when you get ready for your special bag, every bag is unique, is one of a kind, and I do something special. This is a bag that I would want to keep, that I would want to keep for myself. Maria Graham says, amazing work, Auntie Ellen. Thank you. I love, I love creating functional works of art, other works of art. Miss Shirley, OG Gardner, thank you for coming. By the way, you guys, Miss Shirley, OG Gardner will be going live <laughs> after, after her sister's nap. I'm still tired from last night trying to hang out with you guys. I woke up in the middle and she will be going live at seven. Vision preparedness goes live at eight. Grow big TV goes live also at eight. Most of you have more than one. Ooh, Ben and Ford sure made me look ugly under my neck. Every reunion pickpockets were there. Hello. Yes. So, um, I try not to, um, let my PTSD come out, you know? So I try to protect the people. Pescatarian gardener. Thank you for coming. Going back to the lineup of who's coming on this evening at nine o'clock. Odom, Odom is coming on and you guys, <laughs> I apologize that I can't stay up. I, I can't help it. I wake up four o'clock every morning, five o'clock. I try to, I try to stay up. I take a nap. When I finish here, it's like I'm doing jumping jacks, lifting stuff up, reaching over. It's like, I am so, so sleepy. Yankee sister homestead. I tried so hard not to interrupt you and wind down Wednesday last night. I stayed in the bushes until it ended at 10 o'clock. And the next thing I know, it was good morning. Good morning. Then I know you're with the kids in the morning. So I didn't want to bother you. So some of you have asked for, for some of this embroidery that I took out last week. I have bits and pieces. And I, I will be giving it away some of it and um, if you pay for the postage you're welcome to have some of these uh karen's little garden you told me what you wanted your piece if you see this on the review this this one and one that matches it should be big enough to make the thing that you wanted for your granddaughter the rest of you who are getting a piece I want to surprise you. I want to surprise you on what you will actually get. So what is the topic of tonight, this evening? It is about making a rag quilt. What is a rag quilt? Is it made of rags? Not really. You can use it out of old fabrics, but I want you to see yesterday you guys was March 27th and that was my daddy's that would have been 
my daddy's 97th birthday, heavenly birthday, dad. And I made each of my sisters and brothers. I have two sisters, two brothers. I made my daughter, my son, my mom, a rag quilt out of daddy's old work shirts and pants. And mine I made out of a combination of a um, a heavy a, a heavy blanket or a fidget quilt. I'm getting older. Uh, oh, uh, Lorraine T says hi. I have boxes, you guys. I'm on a fixed budget. I ain't crying, ain't complaining. But when I get paid, I try to put out a little bit, mail a few things. So when I get paid in April, I will be going to the post office and mailing some things. Also, since since Christmas, I haven't had a helper. I do have disabilities and certain things I cannot do. Um, my part-time helper had a part-time, a full-time job. I was the part-time job and she was working for Amazon and she had a trip and fall, a really bad one. Bye you sugar. Hello sugar. And thank you for coming. And she was badly injured. So she won't be able to do the things that I need her to do. Dolores, thank you for coming and welcome. I was trying to do something. Hold on just a minute, you guys. I'm okay. I'm trying to fix something. Live chat participant mode. Anybody in the chat can. Anybody in the chat can block, you know, idiots that come in and act disrespectful or impolite and I'm trying to add something but I'm not able to and I don't want to be distracted too long okay okay you guys Okay, so I did it. I did it. So we are talking about daddy's 97th birthday. And I made this quilt out of his old clothes. Well, when I got to my quilt, it had pockets on the jeans, pockets on the shirt. Other people just got plain fabric. So my quilt, because I woke up from a serious, a traumatic brain injury myself 10 years ago and I needed a weighted blanket. I needed a fidget quilt. So I made it for myself and this one, this one was five blocks across and eight down. Well, one of the blocks, I don't know if you guys can remember, the purple fabric had, let me move this forward. My arms get so tired. The purple blocks and I left this here so that you could see that I repaired it. The purple blocks were threadbare. So I sewed three of the cuffs together from my own Ralph Lauren button-down work shirt. And I patched this block. And there was another block that was badly, 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 badly injured. It, it had it was a walking wounded. It was near the end edge, so I'm going to add onto this. Oh, here it is. So here's another one. I'm doing this because some of you have told me that you have old. That's the ice maker dropping ice. Old quilts. You can patch whatever you have over it. You can patch it by hand. You can patch it by machine. You can do whatever, whatever you like. So I told you that I make a little, a little grid. So the existing blocks that I have for this quilt are five across and eight down. So I wanted to count how many, how many blocks I needed. So like, like I needed 
like six across the top, six across the bottom, nine, or however many across there. So in other words, I needed 90, 90 addition. Not what am I talking about? 90. I needed 30 additional blocks. So I've cut them out out of my old work shirts and I'm going to add them to daddy's old quilt. So how do you make, how do you make a rag quilt? Thank you, Yankee sister. This, I wanted to, because when you get around the edges, it's kind of hard to feed that through a regular sewing machine. So I wanted to patch those before I added the blocks around the corner, around the corners. But I wanted to tell you, anybody that wants to make a quilt, even a quilt that would say be a twin size or smaller, get a pencil, something to write with a pen. I know Unbiased LLC always has something to write with. Even a small quilt takes nine yards of fabric. Um, Miss Shirley OG says, thanks for the weekly shout out. It's greatly appreciated. You guys, Yankee, I mean, Miss Shirley OG, Yankee sister, some of the elders, we have been doing a lot of things a lot of times that we just take for granted. We just do it. We just feed our grandchildren. We feed our sisters and brothers. We feed our nieces, cousins, whoever, people in church. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what the elders did in my day. When somebody passed away, the deacon in our church, our family deacon passed away. We, we cooked food. We sent it to the house. We just did. We looked out for each other. Why? Because good friends become family and family is everything. K. Renee's garden. Hello. You're working. I saw your girls in your garden over there where you were trying to keep them out of something that's blooming in California. I miss that. When Auntie Joanne was in your neighborhood and Uncle Roscoe, my dad planted so many fruit trees, oranges, apples, all kinds of stuff. Yankee sister said, facts are mana. That's, that's what you did. And me being an elder, I was like the eldest in the family. And like my mother's not able to physically do all the things she used to do, the baking, the cooking. My mother could cook anything. That's why I can cook anything. My granddaughters, my Auntie Joanne has been breaking down in the kitchen. Thank you, the person from Facebook who is on here. You grew up the same way, Maria Graham. And that's what you did. You know, there was never, I hear people say, well, I got X amount of kids. I can't be feeding everybody. What? You put some more water in the soup. You make some more cornbread. You make some more biscuits. Everybody can eat. That's how we roll. Everybody gets a little bit of something. So I have cut up 30 pieces of jeans to add on to daddy's quilt. And yes, it will be a weighted blanket, but it won't be overly <laughs> heavy for me. I'm a size 14, big girl, adult woman, and I can hold it. And I like having it. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you guys. This, because this shirt had been in the cleaners, because it actually really, really, really was a work shirt. So it's kind of pressed. It's kind of pressed. It's going to be all wrinkled up like the rest of the quilt and soft after I wash it. And I've already frazzled some of the, um, some of the edges. That's what a rag quilt is. It doesn't mean that you made it out of rags. It means that you take the scissors and you cut along the edges and when you wash it, it ravels all up and like, like, like rags. Auntie Joanne cooked my favorite meal last night. She'll never cook it when I'm there. Not ever, ever, ever. She has me in the kitchen. She has me in the kitchen. That's what she does. But she knows her big sister will do anything she wants for her and Roscoe, my, her husband, my brother-in-law. So, you guys, the middle blocks are patched 
because when I go around the outside and add onto it. So I want all of you who have old family quilts to get them out of the basement, to get them out of the garage. I'm coming back, sissy. You guys, I'll be back there for my month anniversary in November. Uh, I, I, I love going warm places when it's cold here. And Auntie Joanne and Roscoe treat me treat me so special. I they give me I have my own room to sleep. I have my own wing of the house. I have my own bathroom. I have a separate room to sew and clutter and make a mess. Then I go down to the den and drag stuff down. I get the I had a 10 pound bag of polyfill because I was making um, neck bone pillows. So she has a nerve. So she sleeps with two of the neck bone pillows down. Now, Uncle Roscoe sleeps in the neck bone pillows. Her dog, Angel, likes to go get on a pillow and you have to go ride, the, go hide them and take them away. My brother, my brother's not usually live because he's working on the weekend, on not the weekend, on the, in the afternoons. So I've got his, his birthday is coming up soon. I have pillows made with Arizona colors for him in April and one other person. And they're going to be ready. I do a little bit, a little, oh, <laughs> my sister said, I take over the whole house and yard. Um, yes, that would be me. <laughs> that will be me. Oh, sissy. You have to come up live because she has an orchid. It started out as a small orchid bush, but someone was talking about orchids today in Gigi Naturals um, chat, and her tree is bigger than the six-foot wall. All orchids, all orchids. Uh, Lorraine T is laughing. Yeah, her house is pretty much trash. I can't tape. I can't do anything when I'm there. She can, if I cook, she has to take a photo of her plate. Why? Because she makes my plate in Roscoe's and we're sitting at the table. By the time she gets to hers, mine is already scarfed down and holes in the plate and whatever. And she's like, Sissy, did you take a picture? A picture? <laughs> no, I forgot. I probably ate the picture. Sissy says she loves that pillow. This is some fabric that Auntie Joanne and I found when I was in Arizona. Then I added some turquoise to it and we bought some orange. Hello at Mediation Paradise Land. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. That's a new face. I appreciate you. If you like the contents of our channel, please consider subscribing and coming back. Auntie Joanne says the dream is blooming. She'll come up Saturday. I will send you a link and ask you to. So Sunday, I will see my daughter. She never got her birthday presents from, <laughs> from March, earlier in March. So she has two pillowcases coming. So my family, I'm blessed that I have a family that everybody works. The teenagers that have graduated from high school are 18 and 20. They work. And they say, well, Nana, don't buy me anything. And they work, they but they already have everything they want or need. And even the 20-year-old bought her first new car already. So I make them things that I put my love in. You can't buy love at Target. You can't buy love at TJ Maxx. I buy them special things or I, I buy the, their colors and I make them things that they love. So this is the quilt that we're going to go over. And what is a rag quilt? You can make the squares in a rag quilt any size you want. And you can see this. I'm actually using this whole piece of the front of the of the of the shirt why because i want to use it i want to remember that i cut up one of my good round floor and button down dress shirts that i used to work in and uh, daddy works in his flannel shirts 
to send me to school so that I would be able. Uh, Auntie Joanne, take a picture of your tree. I have some older pictures, I think, in my photos when the full tree was in bloom. I love going out there and seeing all that. So you see this, this is actually the whole pocket. But I will fringe it in the end, and I sewed around it. But basically, a what is a quilt? A quilt is a fabric sandwich. You have a, I won't do this one because this one's kind of hard to see. So you have a top layer. So this is the top. You have a backing. This one is denim, and you don't have to. You don't have to, but I put batting in mine. Why? I'm in Connecticut. It gets cold here. This, this quilt might be used for anything. It might be used for the kids to go to the beach. It might be used for in the car on a trip. It might be for a bug out, a a vision preparedness, some of the other groups, Blacks Tropical, Paradise, Blacks Tropical, who else? African Dreaming, when they give their get togethers. That's nothing like a comforting quilt. It's nothing like a quilt. So, what size do you make them? You can make the blocks any size that you want. In fact, the bigger blocks are not as usable because. Unless you have a big piece of fabric, it's hard to get. I like, well, this quilt was nine and a half inch blocks. So whatever inch you make your block, say nine inches, I'll just use even numbers. You put your front nine inches. You put the back nine inches. But the batting that goes inside, and I just like cat, cotton. I don't like polyester. So you make your inner piece of batting one inch smaller and you can make it any size you want but when you sew the seams around you're going back to at least five eighths of an inch like those of you who are used to sewing clothes those of you who are making big things you can make the seam an inch you also want to get special scissors for making the fringe they have them on sale i didn't bring any out but I will show them to you on Saturday because I have some. You can have anything that you can cut with, that you can cut with. And so you're making a big fat seam going around the edges. Going around the edges. I'll show you this one because it hasn't been washed yet. You see, this one's like an inch. I fringed it. And then when I wash it, it's going to make it look just like the rest of it. So, does anyone have any questions? Okay, let's go over and make some blocks to go around the outside of the quilt. If anybody has any questions, um, please let me know. Please let me know. And yes, somebody asked uh, all of us... My grandmother taught all of us girls how to knit, crochet, needlepoint. We all worked in the kitchen. We all did chores. My brothers worked with daddy on his trucks. They did painting. Everybody worked. We still work. And that's why Auntie Ellen is such a busybody because that's what you do. That's how you survive. David Corey, the crappa. I saw you. I saw you with your seeds from K. Renee, from You Grow Row, from everybody, all the seed gods. I saw you growing just everything, everything. Thanks for coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now I'm going to go over and show you. Now for me, oh, I just want to say this real quick. For me... I like to just sew an X on the black on the block to sew the pieces of the fabric sandwich together. So you can put any shape. You can put a Z, 
you can do the type of um, meandering. You can do anything you want. You can do anything you want in there. So let's go over to the machine. Let me move things so I don't trip over everything. And I'll show you how I do it. I do some assembly line sewing. I'm moving slowly so that I don't make you guys dizzy. And I'm going over. I brought this heavy duty machine. Oh, DC is David Corey. I like when you guys use abbreviations. Stealth, stealth encryptions and Auntie Nana is trying to figure out what the kids are doing. Okay, so here is, this is a singer for those of you who don't have a sewing machine. This is a pretty much entry level machine. I see some thread is tangled up up here. Let me move this around before we start. Okay, so this is a Singer. I have other machines. I have antique machines. I just like this one because it can sew through 10, 12 pieces of fabric. You see me sewing through the leather like um, the bag. The bag I just made for Mrs. ARD. It has the, the, uh, the outer bag has two layers of fabric the batting. Some pieces I have the same amount, so it's six, sewing through the pocket, sewing through the leather on top of the webbing, and this machine does it. It's also a relatively inexpensive machine. I'm not getting paid to say that. And I bought it on Amazon. It also has an extension table. I don't have the extension table over here, but I just like it, and I I collected some some machines. Some of you know that I have a featherweight machine. It's a Singer featherweight, and I got it from Reverend Bess. And Reverend Bess, I read a story about her autobiography, her biography here in Connecticut. It's a special machine to me emotionally. And it's, it has some value because it was her machine. I heard some of you say that you like the quilt. Yesterday was Growing with Hudson's birthday. And she showed the quilt that I purchased. Do you need help with the comments? Um, I think so. I don't know if I'm supposed to be answering things. You guys, Dolores agreed to help me with the um, oh oh yes yes if you mean highlighting them for me Dolores that would be great I get in the highlight and then get lost and can't keep up with them if you'd be willing to do that I would love that Dolores thank you when you guys make comments to make it highlight on the screen and it's difficult for me to, to see them really fast so thank you Dolores and I hope to have all of you guys, when I say you guys, that's a pronoun, meaning men, women, children, everybody. You'll come backstage now. Okay. Okay. Hold, hold on one second. Let me see. Uh oh, I don't think. Uh, hold on, you guys. Oh. Hold on. I left my book over here. Rome wasn't built in a day, but wait until you get 75. That's what daddy used to tell us. He used to say, just keep on living. Just keep on living. You'll get to be 75. I do okay for 
a 75 year old and i am proud of my age you guys i'm proud that i go on uh oh well hold on i have to go to somewhere else and pull it up just a minute you guys i'm here auntie ella Okay. Just a minute. I'm going to send it. I'm here, Fiala. At gmail dot com. Okay, so I think I sent it, so you did, I'm here. Guys, are you there? Buy you sugar. Dolores, you're the best. You do what you got to do. She's here. Oh, she's doing it already. Look at David Corey with this little hat on, you guys. I think I'm enjoying this more than you guys um so dolores can i add you to did you want to come up like, uh, I see, oh up. there you are i'm behind the scenes so what you i'm can, doing you can hear me but you won't this see is me. funny so if i click on you i'm here it's just that i put it where you could just hear me don't see me oh you can hear her Okay, so I can't. Dolores is so sweet. Okay, you guys. So I see I didn't. I didn't. They can hear her, but I don't know why I can't hear her. How about. I'm learning, you guys. I am learning. So, how about this? This is what I do need help with. She heard me say on Saturday that I needed help with a couple things. And she volunteered to come up and help me. So, da -da 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 -da, Unbiased LLC told me to have an earplug. Odom, hello. Thank you for coming and welcome, Odom. I told everybody that you will be there at nine o'clock tonight. So, why can I not hear? Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. <laughs> da, 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 da. And there was light. Woosa. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Dolores. Yes, I, did I did you want to come up live or everybody see you or you're cool over there? What do I do to bring you up? Oh uh, no, I'm cool. I'm backstage. Anytime oh, you need to call me, I'll be thank here. you. You're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many people. For those of you on Facebook, I have people that have I have so many people call me mom, call me Auntie Penny. Call me Auntie Nana. Roscoe said to tell you hi. Wait until you get 85. I'm still a youngster. Oh, Roscoe never tells his age. Oh, bless you, Roscoe. Roscoe's chipping into the family dynasty where there are six living generations. So what I'm going to show you guys is this is a piece of fabric that I've cut the front. So I'm going to be adding on to my dad's quilt. I'm just going to show you a couple of these and show you how I assembly line sew them. Okay. So I'm going to turn around, not plop off the chair. And I'm so glad that Unbiased told me about the earplug headphone. I actually do have headphones, 
So what I'm going to do is sew a diagonal on one side, and I'm going to sew about four or five of them and show you guys how you can do it once you cut your blocks. Okay, I'm going to make a big stitch because this is a lot of fabric. It's three layers plus the batting. I'm going to make the stitch lunch three straight stitch, and I'm just going to put it in the middle. So all I'm doing is sewing from diagonal to diagonal. Okay, so that's one side. Then we'll pretend through magic this side. And you see, I'm using everything. I'm using the, um, the seam, everything. And now I'm going to sew the other side. And you just keep going. You don't have to back, you don't have to back stitch. You don't have to do anything. And this is the warmest, coziest quilt. Okay. So I could pin it. There's no need to. I'm just holding it loosely, roughly in my fingers. And this one, I've already sewn the one side. So you just, when you assembly line sewing or chain piecing, you just keep going. You don't have to cut the thread, but guess what? I have this fancy little thing. Scam likely. Let me send them to message land. Okay. Uh-oh. It did bump me off. Okay, I'm back. So this is a little thread cutter. You can buy them online. And when you assembly line sew, when you assembly line sew, instead of cutting the thread with the scissors, this is a, a little razor blade in there. Pop. That's all you do. This one's not long enough yet. So you just put it on there and you don't have to keep, if you have arthritis in your hands or whatever, you don't have to keep sewing and, 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 Ag aggravating yourself. Okay. I don't know. Can you guys still hear Dolores? I don't know that phone yes, call. Oh, yes, okay. I was just letting you uh, do it. I moved your name so everybody can see you stitch. I didn't know how to do that. Thank you so much. So I'm just doing this to encourage you guys to do it. I don't know anybody who would refuse a, qu a quilt. Everybody loves getting one. Everybody loves having one. So I'm just going to sew these few little ones. I use the seams of the jeans. I use everything. I, I use whatever you have. If you want to make, say, a say a twin size quilt, you you will need you'll need about three four yards of fabric for new fabric for the front, four or five yards for the back. It takes about nine yards, and you need to get fa uh, batting for a twin size quilt, and then you'll have little bits and pieces for other things. So this is, this is all you do, and I will be preparing these 30 blocks to go along the outside. And I will add them to Daddy's quilt. And it will finally be long enough to keep my neck warm and my butt warm and my feet warm at the same time. No, mother, I didn't say butt in public. 
Mother, I'm being a good daughter. I'm not being fresh over here. I have something I want to show you on this next piece. You see this piece? This piece is part of the sleeve. It doesn't matter. This is just a red quilt. I'm going to use this too. Because you know why? It's simply to keep me warm. It has sentimental value because it was my dad's. And my shirt. So this is how simple it is. I'm just going to finish these last four little blocks. Oh, and by the way, you guys, I never sew over pins. Some of you, some of you do, some of you can. I don't sew over pins. Number one, I don't want to break a needle. Needles are expensive, especially these heavy duty needles. I put heavy duty needles in this machine. I was working on those bags over there and I was sewing leather. So I actually, I actually put a leather needle in there and you know it's just like waste not want not that's all people who have money don't throw it away that's why okay you see how fast this went this was 10 quickie blocks i'm gonna put this one over because it slipped a little bit. Oh, whatever Dolores did. I love this the way that you guys can see it. So, Miss Dolores. I'm yes, just looking Lord. to see if Ralph Lauren's little horse was right side out. Since he charged me so much for his quilt. So, you guys... I just wanted to show you what I will be doing to make this into a rag quilt. And so I've been on about an hour. It's a little after five. So I will let you guys go back to work, go back to whatever you're doing. Don't forget, Odom will be live at nine o'clock this evening. Miss Shirley OG will be live at seven. I appreciate each and every one of you. Dolores, you rock. Thank you very much. And I'm going to call you later on because I want you to get your family quilts out, everybody who has quilts to repair and restore. And we're going to do this together. That's part of your family history. And we're going to make a label to go on it because I'm making an additional to the quilt I already made before. I'm going to put a new label on there that shows, okay, I added to it. One of my great-grandchildren, you know, my grandson, my everybody comes in, you know, periodically. If they come across this quilt, maybe they won't throw it in Goodwill. They'll know why Nana made it and the history behind it. That was one of the things that Hudson loved about her quilt. Her quilt had actually been in a couple of quilt shows. And I gave her a story of my artistic background that she can keep with her quilt. Her quilt may be worth some money one day, as David Corey says. So you guys, in American Sign Language, this is an I, this is an L, this is a U, this is how you say I love you. Do what you love and love what you do. Ego amote. I appreciate you guys. I will be live on Saturday 